Let me show you how to lock up issues in Jira. Let's assume that you have a user or maybe a group of users that need to access only a very specific subset of issues within your Jira project. Giving access to a user at the project level is not going to solve this problem because the access is given to all the issues for that project. So while project to project, you can definitely lock up issues within that single project. The moment that the user has browse access to that project, they're able to see all those issues. But what if you wanted to lock up just a subset, maybe the issues that belong to specific criteria or have a specific value for a very, very specific field, what if those issues were classified, right? What if you locked them up and only wanted just a very, very subset of your entire user base for this particular project? What if only those people can access just those projects? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve what might seem like a very, very impossible task. And it's actually not that complicated once you know the steps which I'm going to show you in this video. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value. And don't forget to check out the links down below as they contain links to my courses, to my merch store, and most importantly, links to the sponsors of this video. Don't want to sleep in because I got something to prove. I got to take what I hate and finally make a move. This video is sponsored by release. All right, so let's jump into Jira and let me show you how to achieve what what Otherwise seem like a pretty impossible task, but again, it's not that complicated. There are a lot of steps involved, but let me show you how to get this done. So you're going to want to go into the project that you want to set this up for. And there's some preliminary work, a little prerequisite, if you will, of things that we're going to have to do. And so first, let me give you a little bit of a backstory. So what exactly do we mean when we say we're going to lock up issues? So let's just say that this particular story under this particular process area, Let's just say we want to lock this up, right? And so what we're going to do is up here in this corner, we're going to enable a little lock. It, it becomes like a little red lock, which I'll show you again in a moment. And that means that only the people that meet that specific criteria for seeing the issue that has a little red lock are going to be able to see the issue. Everybody else, the issue won't exist for them. And that's going to be true whether they're looking up JQLs, whether they're looking up uh, metrics and dashboards, those issues, while they do exist and they are available in that Jira project, they're simply not going to be in their purview and, and visibility. So only the people that meet the criteria for this particular lock are going to be able to see it. So let me show you how to do this. But before we even get too far with this, the very, very first most important critical thing that you need to do in order to get this all to work correctly, you need to pick a field that's going to serve as your criteria. And what I mean by that is you need, whether it's a custom field, a label, a component, right? Anything you want, but you need a field, some indicator that tells you, hey, when I hit this criteria, I want you to lock it up. So maybe you have a label that says like classified. Maybe you have a label that says private, or maybe you're doing it off of a custom field or a single select or something like that, right? But whatever it is, we are going to have to make a decision. And so you don't want to get too far in this video without having made your critical decision of which field is going to trigger this stuff. So for the simplicity of this video, I'm just going to say priority equals critical. If the priority of an issue is ever critical, I'm going to lock it up again, just, just as a demo, right? But you're going to want to do something much more meaningful to you and your team. So let's just assume that if the priority equals critical, we're locking them up. So now let's go into showing you how to get all this achieved. All right, so it is again a multi multi step process here. So first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to go to the gear up here in the top right corner. We're going to go to issues. Once we're there on the left hand side, we're going to scroll down and we're looking for issue security schemes. We're going to want to create one of these. And so you're going to come over here and we're going to add an issue security screen. And we're going to, as you can see, I already have a couple and we're just going to call this critical issues only. And we're going to click add. Now, this is probably the simplest step, but it is just simply making this security scheme. Now, this will do nothing. We need to now go into it and set it up. I'm going to tell you that creating groups or users is going to be also very, very beneficial. And so you may want to do a little bit of homework before you get this far. But another semi prerequisite is you're going to want to have in mind 
who's going to be able to see what you should have that mapping already and so if you need to put people in a specific group or if the people already exist in a specific group you're going to want to know what those are because i'm going to show you what your options are here but let's just say we have all access and i'm going to create a security level there and I'm just going to create one here. And I'm going to show you what this means in a second, right? And then I'm going to say critical users only. All right. Now, this part is kind of optional. You don't have to create as many, but it really depends on your requirements. So if your requirement is, and this is where this stuff can get really complicated. So pay special attention to this, right? So if your requirement is, hey, I want everybody to see all the issues, but if the priority or again, whatever your criteria is, insert that now, but if the priority is critical, then I only want like these two or three individuals to see it. So we're going to lock it. So in this case, if that is your use case, then you really only need one security level because we're going to not put any security on issues. And then the ones that need to be locked, we're just going to lock them. Right. But now if your use case is the opposite, right? If you have a much more complicated use case, it could be like, I want all the issues to be locked. And then I only want these three individuals to see these three specific issues, right? And so that gets complicated because now you have to lock all the issues up and intentionally omit the individuals you don't want to see your issues out of being able to see all the issues. And then only for the ones that are for their eyes only, then add them to that. So that gets a little bit complicated. And so in the comment section, let me know if that's the use case you fall under, but I'm going to do the simple one in this video, which is literally everything's open and we're just going to lock up a couple just to show you how to do it. But doing it the complicated way is not that much more different, except that you do need to have two security levels, right? All access so that everybody else can see it, but not the other people. And then the one for the other people. So that's kind of the only uh, heads up I'll give you there. But anyways, once we're there, once we've created these, I'm just going to simply add critical users only for this, again, for the remainder of the video, just to keep it simple. So all you got to do is once you made the security level is you're going to come over to add and we're going to then add individuals. And so you have a couple of different options. You can do a customer, um, the application, the reporter, a group, a single user, a project lead, current assigning, a user custom field value, which means you can create a, a user picker for a custom field and then those individuals in that field, project role, or a group custom field value. Now, I'm just going to keep it simple. Again, um, I just like simplicity. We're going to just do group and we're going to do a group over here and we're going to do just developer group A and we're going to click add. All right. Very, very simple again, all you, but you do need to dictate this. So again, some pro tips, I would add all your sitemans at as a group here, because then at least they can go and see stuff. Because keep in mind, when you lock these things up, they're locked to anybody that doesn't meet the criteria. So in down the road, if you ever need to troubleshoot or you need some help figuring out what the heck's going on, it's a good idea for your site level admins, your org admins to be able to access this. So add the group site admins so that those individuals can at least help you troubleshoot otherwise. You're gonna have a really, really tough time because they're not gonna be able to see it either, because those issues will be locked to them as well. So good idea to always add in any of and all of your security here, add your site admins so that they can help you troubleshoot in the future. And again, you can complicate this more by adding different groups, different roles, whatever you want. It's really up to you. But the important thing is you need to provide something, right? It doesn't have to be anything too glamorous, but you do need to provide something. And once you're done there, we're kind of done, right? So again, you would set up all your users or any logged in user, whatever you want, a specific group of internal users. And then this would be like internal users plus external, right? It's up to you to set this up however you want, depending on, again, your specific criteria, but the, the steps are the same. All right. So once you have that done, now we got to go to our project. And so we're going to go to our Kanban workflow one. And we're going to come down to project settings and we are going to come over here to security and we're going to as you can see this is how yours should look with no security if you've never done this before and then you're going to click on actions and you're going to select the scheme and of course we're going to go and select the scheme we just created which is that critical issues only click next and then click associate so this is going to take a couple of seconds here depending on how many issues you have and i didn't have very many so it's just going to happen instantaneously and there you have it the issue of security now exists, but it would be foolish for you to think that you're done, right? So now, as you can see, I have a critical issue here and notice there's no lock. There's no way for me to set this up. Well, let me tell you, this is, that was the easy step. Everything else from this point forward, this is where it gets a little bit more complex. 
So like, as I mentioned, those were all the easy steps. Now comes the hard part. Now we actually want to lock it up. So there's a couple of other things we want to do. I want to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence for internal collaboration. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. So number one, we want to go back to project settings and we want to go to screens. We want to make sure that for the issue types that we're going to be doing this for in the screen of that issue type. And again, it could be all your issue types. It could be one. It could be whatever you want. Make sure security level is there. A lot of people don't use security level. And so they try to be clever and they delete that field from being available. And then this whole thing doesn't work. So make sure that security level is in the screen for the issue type that we're going to be enabling this on, because that's going to be playing a very, very critical role of making sure that all this works as intended. So if that's not there and this thing's not working, go make sure that your security level is there. So now that we've done a little bit of a sanity check and the security is there, now it's going to come the fun part. The way I recommend you do this is that you do it through automation. You don't want to manually be locking up issues. You want this to happen in a very autonomous way, very, very little to no input required from you or an admin. So let me walk you through the clever ways of setting this up. So once you have this all done in your project, we're going to go over to back to the project here. And we're, I was going to go through the global way, but I, that's not a best practice. So let me, let me show you how to do it the right way. So we'll go to project settings and we're going to click on automation for this particular project. And then we're going to click on create a rule. And we're just going to say, Hey, when a field value changes. Now this is again, we have a lot of creativity. If I was in your position, I would do it so that when an issue is created and the, whatever criteria is met or set, whatever field you're looking for is equal to a specific value then set the value or set the security then and there. But because again, I just, there's just so many different ways to skin the cat. I'm just going to listen for that priority field because if the priority changes to critical, then I want to apply the rule, but you might want to come out of the gate swinging and just a moment the, the issue is created. If my particular field is set to a specific value, then set the security, right? But it, again, it just depends on the level of criticality of how important it is for you to lock up data or not. Right? So, if you high, high security, the moment the issue is created, you're going to want this rule to be triggered. But if you just don't care, then you're just going to do what I'm doing, which is like, hey, I'm just going to be listening. I'm going to be open. I'm okay until a certain value is set. So I'm going to be listening for priority. And when the priority uh, changes, right, I don't care what the change is, right, I'm going to be listening for um, a specific value. So if the priority equals critical, then I'm going to take my action. And so your action is you're going to edit issue and you're going to do security. And you're going to see that we have security level here. And now I should see my critical users only, right? So now that I belong to that group or now that I'm in a group that qualifies to see that critical issues only, then it's going to work. Now, in order to demonstrate this correctly, I'm going to go remove myself from that group so you can see that that issue disappears on me. But anyways, uh, we'll set, we'll set that we'll hit save. And then we'll just put like lock up critical issues. We'll hit turn it on. And now the fun begins right now is where this is going to work out much, much better. So we're going to take an issue from the backlog, one that doesn't have, you know what, we're going to create a new story. <laughs> we're going to create a brand new story and we're going to set this story to show demo security. And we're going to make sure that this priority is not critical. We're going to do it highest, right? We're going to leave everything else alone. I don't care about anything else. And now we're going to go view this issue. And so when you view this issue, notice that it doesn't have any security because if you remember from my criteria, all issues are open unless they become critical. So now, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on priority here and I'm going to move this issue to critical. All right. So once that value has been set to critical, you can go ahead and refresh your screen or open up that issue. And then notice that it now has a little lock. Now, in case you're not getting the little lock, a couple of different things that I want you to consider. One, again, make sure that that field is in your screen. 
make sure that it's in your field configuration. And number three is make sure that the permission for set issues is as appropriate, right? So in your project settings under permissions, there is a set issue security one right here. And if you or whatever rule is running is not set for this, right? The actor of that rule, if it's not set for to have this power, then this is not going to work. So if you're having a hard time, make sure you check out those different three different things, the screen, the fields, and then the security. But once that's there, notice that my particular issue is still visible to me. And it's visible to me because there's a lock and it's critical uses only. And I'm in the group that belongs to that critical users only. But if I were to remove myself, hypothetically, keep an eye on KWD33, I'm not going to do anything else other than remove myself from this group. And so if I were to remove myself from this group, and then refresh my screen. And then you can see that my KWD33 is now gone. So unfortunately, I won't be able to get it back unless I go back into that group and add myself again. So this is what I'm saying. Like, it's always a really, really good practice to make sure your site admins are in them because otherwise they're not going to be able to see those issues. So really, really just let your site admins set this all up and have them watch this video so that they can do it correctly. Otherwise, again, it's not going to be good and you're going to be on a witch hunt trying to find all these uh, different issues that are now gone. I wanted to take a quick second to tell you about today's sponsor. I recently discovered Released, a Jira app that generates stunning release notes straight from your Jira tickets. What used to take me hours takes minutes with Released. It's so easy to use. Just drag and drop your issues into the editor to craft your release notes. Then publish your announcements with a single click to your website, in-app widget, or Confluence for internal collaboration. Make sure you click on the link in the description down below to start your free trial. So anyways, that's it. That's how you set up that security level. And hopefully it was beneficial. Again, it's a little bit tricky, a little bit, it's very, very involved, but it's not that hard as long as you follow the steps here as an outline, right? So just to recap the video, number one, make sure that that security field is set for your screens for that particular issue type or type that you want. Number two, make sure it's in your field configuration. It doesn't have to be required, but just make sure it's available. Some people can delete it. Uh, number three, make sure the permission settings are correct. Number four, make sure that when you're setting up your security scheme that you add your site admins is going to play critical for any down the road troubleshooting. And that's pretty much it. Do the steps follow in this video, add the issue scheme, set it all up correctly, and you're going to be just fine. If you have any questions, again, let me know in the comment section. Um, I'd like to help troubleshoot and help you out. This is probably one of the harder, more advanced things to do in Jira. I don't think people should be doing this. I'm not a big believer of locking the issues up, but so many different business requirements, use cases out there that I just want to show you how to do this. So if you did enjoy this video, make sure you smash that like button as this video, again, really, really super valuable. So make sure you smash that like button. And most importantly, don't forget to smash that subscribe button as well. Finally, check out the links down below as I have the links to my merch store, to my paid courses, and of course, links to the sponsors that make these videos possible. So go show them some love, go try out their apps, leave them a review, and I'll see you in the next one.